for punts of 60 yards or more with 18 of those. And then he also had two punts of 80 yards or more this season, too. That's wow. crazy. Holy 80 smoke. yards punt? Talk oh about flipping the yeah. field, right? You yeah, know, dude. It, you got to wonder where he would end up in the draft as well, too, right? I mean, obviously, he'd probably be late, you know, sixth, seventh round, probably. Yeah, I, I don't think yeah. anyone's going to uh, use a one, two, three, maybe, not even a, <laughs> a four for no, a, pun, for a punter. No. Hey. Well, I think the Raiders have done that before, but uh, yeah, well, you know, yeah. that's that, yeah, that's that's typical Raiders, you know. Yeah, yeah typical yeah. Raiders. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one, one person I was thinking about is um, Nuchenna who We haven't really talked about yep. him a whole lot. Yes, yes. I mean, how much? How much is this guy going to get paid? I, I'll tell you right now, he had flashes of brilliance oh um, yeah yep season. absolutely um yeah. so i mean what what's what's the what's the talk on on how much he's probably going to see five million a year three million a year what are we thinking you know and and, and i was kind of looking around at that and it wasn't really giving true factors but i did see some on um on a sports track kind of talking about contract estimates mm-hmm. they were saying it was around a seven million per year kind of estimate and the thing about uchenna Nuosu, I, I feel like he really flourished in the second half of the year. And he obviously had games where he just controlled. Like, that Raiders yeah. game was yep. phenomenal for him. Yep. You know, that pick that he got, too, against uh, um, the Chiefs, too, yep. where he just trapped crazy. the ball up and is right near, like, our goal, yep. or uh, their goal. I mean, that was phenomenal. Um, and he – I'll say this, though. He was behind Melvin Ingram for all these years, yep. too. Yep. And he had very little time on the field. And I think that this is – I, I want to say this is a guy that we need to go after and keep because mm-hmm. I, I think it's one of those things that he's still young. I think he showed that he flash 26. of brilliance. Yeah. Yeah, and he's got the opportunity to become a much higher graded guy yeah. too uh, going Absolutely. into the next year. So, yeah, you know, I, and I think that it's pretty fair to say, you know, with a higher salary cap, there's going to be a lot of people wanting to go after him. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously we could even look at some sort of – you know, franchise tag, even for Mike Williams or even to for Nuosu. Those are probably mm-hmm. the two candidates I would look at probably for that kind of thing. Uh, really interesting. Um, but he's one of those guys that I think we need to go after and keep. Um, mm-hmm. And we need yep. to look at that. I don't know if it's going to be a three-year type thing or whatnot. But, um, you know, I think it was something I was reading about Nuosu and his field time that he had wasn't really nearly as high as like you would think. I think it was in the 38 to like 45 percent of the, being on the field okay no too so he really wasn't on the field like that long if you think about it um i i mean i think on here it states to the 67 but if somebody was talking a little bit more about i think in his his career wise right. he really hasn't had a lot of field time so what i'm saying is that this year was his big field year mm-hmm. like experience time i mean i think even going back to the playoff game against the ravens i think he made the big sack and I believe got the fumble recovery against Lamar Jackson to win that game for us too. Mm-hmm. And I, that's kind of even going further back in his earlier part of the year is that he made impact plays. Mm-hmm. Now, I always have a concern about a player that comes in his last year of his contract and right. just balls out because that's those, those gives me a little bit of warning flags in two different yeah. ways. One, it could be a flag of he's going to be great and he's going to accelerate if you sign him. Or mm-hmm. he's just going to get paid and he's going to decelerate at that yeah. point yeah. because it's going to bring him back I mean, a little you, bit. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. you get paid a ton of money and then all of a sudden you kind of think, well, I'm good. I kind of don't need to try harder anymore yeah. kind yeah. of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. So I get a little scared about that signing, but I do think that the trajectory of him is great from what the second half of the season showed us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then at the same time, I mean, that's, I, I, I totally understand that idea. Um, but uh, I, I would also say, I mean, like these people are actually athletes and they're competitive and stuff and yep. so, and they want to play. And right. I feel like they still will put their heart and soul out there in the field. You know, uh, I would say like, uh, you know, Nuosu is, is a good option, but I think what's for, um, for the franchise tag, but I think Kaiser White is a better option for the yeah. franchise ch- tag since he stepped up and really – uh, you know, sh- showed us like, how good he was too, and like, and this he's on this list as well. So, yep. Um, 
Yeah. Kaiser White is a, a yeah. must sign. I think he led, he yeah. led uh, us in tackles this season. Yes. Uh, statistically. Yeah. Oh, think, yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. He was, he was all over the field, man. He was, it was just like, you know, Junior Seo back in the day, you know? Yeah. Well, and remember, remember when Derwin James got hurt, Kaiser White stepped up as yeah. the, the captain for the defense, right? So he yeah. was, he was the, the guy. So, yeah. you know, uh, and that brings up a whole other conversation around, um, you know, K9, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I think uh, this is off subject specifically, but I think that they really tried to use him in a bunch of different ways. Yeah. But yeah. it's pretty, pretty clear that he's just a middle linebacker. And I think having to be an edge rusher, he's just not going to do it. He's yeah. not going to do the job. Yeah. No, I mean, um, he, he needs to be but, a, uh, like a run defense person. Yes. So like he, he needs, needs to spy. Attack on, the line. He yeah, needs to be attack, attack the line. Yeah. Attack yep. the line. Spy on yep. the, the running back and like just like if anything, you know, just maybe he can block those like short pass, like you know, yeah. little like uh, running back options, you know. Yeah. Like. Yeah. It, it, yeah. yeah using him as an edge rusher, it, it was it was an interesting thought, but it was clear it did not work out. Right. Right. Yep. right. I think Nawosu is the the better guy. He's the better choice. And Leaf Kaiser White and K nine in the middle, mm-hmm. and and they're 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 there to stop the run. And again, right. I ask myself this question all the time too, right? Why was stopping the run so difficult with our defense? Yeah. Did we really yeah. just not have yeah. the right talent, or do we just not tackle correctly? I think it was a mixture of both. Yeah. Yep. Um, right. You know, again, they double team Linville Joseph right up the middle, and then they, it, the, nobody else could stop the run, right? right. And I mean, there were yeah. gaps all over them. I mean, yeah. all the, the time. Raiders were just gashing us at the end yeah. there. Yeah. And yep. You know, it, it, it just goes to show you that, that we didn't quite have the, the right people there. But I mm-hmm. do think Kaiser White and um, and uh, Nuosu definitely need to be re-signed. You know, and Fackrell, I think Fackrell did really well as well, too. I was pretty happy with yeah. him. Yeah, you know, and I'm good, with, I'm good with having him as another, um, you know, depth-based player for us, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't think it would be a bad deal, too. I mean, Chris Rump is another guy that we got to think yep. about for a right. second year. Yep. And I think he did a couple of good plays, too, and he, I think he could fit in that role base role, too. So mm-hmm. there, there's a decision-making on that side in that position. But, you know, just going to what Kaiser White, it's interesting because it, he he's kind of an interesting guy to me because I feel like there was some seasons he was not as good, and then there were seasons that he was really good. Yeah. And this last season, once again, that's kind of where my fear is, did he just peak at the right time because now he's in the right system? Yep. Or when he initially got drafted three years ago, that system wasn't working in the Gus Bradley system. Yeah. Yeah. And so if he flourishes the way he is and we pair him up with a better linebacker to be able to fit, because they always put two linebackers in the middle of the defense in yeah. front of that line. Mm-hmm. If we get another run sniffing out linebacker there that could help him out, I mean, it, it would definitely be a very, very strong linebacking core for us. But yeah. Now they're saying with Kaiser White, he's probably going to be. They're in kind of a, I heard twelve million dollar range total contract. Um, okay. Now twelve twelve million total contract, not meaning mm-hmm. as a yearly contract. I mean we're not yeah. at that level yet, yeah, but yeah. some people are saying that you know with the bump of the um, salary cap going up to two hundred eight million now. People will be looking at him because obviously you look at his stats and you think, holy smokes, this guy had a lot of right. production. Right. And right. Yeah. So they're saying on the high end, they're saying that, hey, three or $15 million contract is totally doable. Now, mm-hmm. if you look at like that franchise tag, that franchise tag will be in the eight to nine million, mm-hmm. probably a little bit higher than that, possibly $10 million yeah. range. If they do that, I think it's just better just to be able to get, if that is going to be his market value, just sign him yeah. at a three fifteen year. That's that's perfect for us to work with. So right. I would go with that. I would go with that for sure. So, I, um, so we, we have a couple more on this list that we probably should talk about as well. I, I know Justin Jones would be one we want to discuss. Yeah, you know, obviously with Justin Jones, I mean, he's another guy that we got to think about on the line. And I think that he – one thing I really liked and appreciated after the season is his passion and his voice and how yeah. he, he was frustrated and he seemed like – ticked off ready for the next season yep and i could tell that he wants to be here and he wants to be in brandon staley's defense so i think we have to go with him and have to get him back and i think he's a passionate guy and to be honest i think our run defense which it was terrible all around but having him on the field i think made a big difference 
so I mean, he was pair him up with somebody else. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. he had his injury issues and everything, but he worked through them, and I think he he's good. Right. Seeing around maybe about a five million dollar a year kind of range. I don't know what we're looking at that. on a term for that, but I mean, heck, if we get him for a three or four year kind of deal around that point, that mm-hmm. would be doable for yeah, us. I think um, we can t- totally do that. I mean, like we're paying Linval Joseph eight and a half million a year, uh, yeah. and, and you know, and I think he's obviously I I as much as as good as he is, he's he's got to go. I mean, yep. I I think because he's he's getting up there in age and. Yeah. Uh, and obviously he just was getting gobbled up and stuff like that, you know, but like, so we'll yep. keep, we can keep Justin Jones and, you know, pay him more and then get somebody else like Linval Joseph, but who's also younger, I think is, yep. is the, is the bigger, biggest thing younger and hopefully maybe stronger. I don't know. Yep, exactly. <laughs> of course, of course. And, and yeah. there's a lot of guys that we're keying in on in the draft that I think would be great choices for that. Yeah. And I think there's a pretty good defensive line draft choices yeah. that we can make. So, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I think um, I think that's that's another thing that they said in that presser is that it's a pretty deep uh, defensive line draft this year. Yep. So yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And and we need that depth, right? You know, and it's clear. I think part of the problem on the defensive side as well too is that that we weren't consistent. We playing with the the front and the back of the defense. It seemed like there was always injuries on both sides of right, the ball. Right, right. So they were never really out there. I mean, again, you look at the Rams. You know man, they, they, they didn't seem like they had many injuries all season, right? And so they knew what they were doing out there the entire time. Yep. So I think the injuries do mount up, especially when you don't have the depth. And, and it was very clear that the Chargers did not have the right depth yep. Um, yep. on the defensive side. I think, you yep. know, they can improve the quarterback play. Quarterback play. They could definitely improve the line play. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the linebackers were in question, right? K-9 was hurt most of the time, mm-hmm. you know, and it's huge, right? And, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really an interesting thing to think about, you know, right. Right. Yep. This offseason. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 you know, I don't want to kind of lead it into this point, but this is kind of something that I know we could talk a little bit about draft and guys, players that we could kind of look at. And I, I put Ty Long kind of as a tier two kind of guy with the team. And, and why I'm kind of saying that is kickers, kickers are one of those guys that you kind of think about, but you don't really like try to invest too heavily on, but then again, yeah. it can make a big difference in a game. And, um, it can. You know, there was a lot of times of Ty Long getting blocked kicks and yep. kind of a long stride to be able to get a kickoff. Like, yeah. yep. it, it just, there's times that I kind of thought maybe we could make an adjustment on this. So, and I don't want to get too heavily into the draft, but I, I, I think with the amount of draft picks that we have, total 11, and I'm not trying to go too heavily into the draft right now, but right. I think there's ways that we could look past uh, Ty Long. And, and I think yeah. he's a good kicker, but I think there was some issues in that side. So, yeah. I, I don't know if I, I you agree. guys taken – if you've taken a look at this guy, and this is a guy that there's a lot of talk about him going into the draft as one of the top kickers, is Matt Ariza from SDSU. Once again, yeah. oddly that it's a, a kid from San Diego. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And born in San Diego, San Diego kid and everything. This guy has a leg. Yeah. Dude, this yeah. guy, he is unreal. So basically he holds the NCAA record of punts of 50 yards or more oh. with 39 of those. And then, mind you, Ty Long, I think, was in the 45 range on average kick. Yep. Um, the record for punts of 60 yards or more with 18 of those. And then he also had two punts of 80 yards or more this season, too. That's wow. crazy. Holy 80 smoke. yards punt? Talk oh about flipping God. the field, right? You know, yeah, dude. It, you got to wonder where he would end up in the draft as well, too, right? I mean, obviously, he'd probably be late, you know, sixth, seventh round, probably. Yeah, I, I don't think yeah. anyone's going to uh, use a – one, two, three, maybe not even a, <laughs> a four for no, a, pun, for a punter. No. Hey. Well, I think the Raiders have done that before, but uh, yeah, well, you know, yeah. that's that, yeah, that's that's typical Raiders, you know, yeah, yeah typical yeah. Raiders. <laughs> yeah, yep. But uh, I, I did kind of hear a little bit about that. He's kind of more a third day kind of pick, so you could think okay, in yeah. the fifth round. I mean, you got to think hard, hard, long on that kind of choice. And I mean, yeah. the thing is, though, we've always kind of had. With Telesco, those mid rounds have always been key guys for us yeah. for some reason. Drew sure. Tranquil being one of those that comes to mind first. Yeah. That really just end up being really, really solid players for us. Yeah. And so a kicker is kind of a weird thing for draft purposes, but at the same side, our special team sucks. And I'm yeah. sorry, we got rid of our coach too. You gotta make a decision at that point. Yeah. And yeah. the cool thing about Matt Ariza too is that he also had field goal kicking ability too, and he kicked field goals for a while. He didn't do that well this year, 
He was mm-hmm. only in the 70 percentile range, which has generally been our average as a Chargers team for a long time. But yeah. if you did bring in and kept in Dustin Hopkins, too, and had him, Matt Ariza there, too, you, he could get tips and tricks a little bit from Dustin Hopkins. You yeah. Say Dustin Hopkins is on another one-year contract. And maybe we could put Matt Ariza eventually as our punter and kicker, too. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Who knows? I think that's a fantastic deal. And I, I think it's a great choice for them to go with if, if they don't move on with Ty Long. I, yeah. It's kind of an odd choice, but flip the yeah. field. I mean, it. I mean, 86 yard potential on a kick. I mean, that, that is massive, be massive to think about, but that would be one of the coolest things to see. But, you know, we wanted to just key in, in, in this whole show, we wanted to just key in on specific guys. There's mm-hmm. a lot of depth, choices that we got to make and we got plenty of money to make it happen with a lot of these guys i just wanted to make sure we kind of key in on those right guys you know the mike williams chris harris jr i don't i don't think he's that guy he's a 33 year old guy now didn't really do well linville joseph going to be kind of an expensive guy 34 right now but there's those guys mike williams that we got to think hard about jared cook probably not one of those guys in my opinion yeah 35 year old yeah. Not, not my opinion. Odeo Bushi, I think so. Fackrell, Nawasu, Hopkins, Daniels, Roberts. There's a lot of guys out there. Justin Jones, mm-hmm. Kaiser White that we need to think about. But I think that we do have probably a good five to six guys that we need to think long and hard on For and sure, where yeah. we need to go with. So yep. Less than I'm excited guys. to see where they go. Yep. I'm excited to see where they go. But, uh, you know, I, I think this is going to be a fun 2022 off season for us with the draft, with the free agency and all that. So I'm excited about it. So let's go Chargers. And I guess final thoughts for each one of you guys. What do you, what do you guys think? And I mean, I guess one thing that I was going to bring up too was Justin Jackson as another player too. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's in, um, he's free and free to go anywhere he wants to right now. Yeah. Is he going to be one yep. of those guys that we'd like to pick up? I right. mean, he has his, his flashes of where he's, brilliant and does well he looks like that clear defined two guy great component to add to the team right but is he going to be that guy to stay healthy and be relied on all year we've been drafting a lot of running backs the last couple years and it just seems like they haven't worked out so far yeah Um, i mean and and that's the the question too because i mean like if the question to keep justin jackson falls down on is joshua kelly going to be able to step up to be our running back too uh I I just don't know. I mean, because he's also injury prone as well. Uh, yeah. And you know, great personality for sure. You can't like freaking knock the guy, uh, talk crap about the guy with a smile like that. You know. Yeah. But nice uh, dude. yeah, super nice dude. And uh, and I, I just hope that uh, I don't know. Like I think they're they'll they'll make the right choice here, uh, whatever it is. But I do like Justin Jackson a lot. I feel like he does have a good potential there. Yeah. However, I kind of feel like we need a, like a a bigger guy uh, yeah. in that position, you know, like a little bruiser back. Yeah. yeah, some, yeah. Someone, yeah. Someone, someone like a Derrick Henry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or just someone who just like, who can like just punch holes, like, you no, know, and just through that line, like, you know, cause yeah. usually like the r- running back too is the, uh, the goal line or that, you know, fourth or third and one, fourth and one kind of person. And sure. we, don't, we don't really have that. I mean, we kind of, we could say maybe round tree, uh, yeah. but uh, he's he's kind of spotty as well, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah, it's just my thought too. Is like um, on, on that situation there. Yeah, um, and I think one other guy that we really didn't touch about is Jalen Guyton. I think we need to keep him for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, I think he did very well with uh, with Herbert, and mm-hmm. you know you want to keep that that offense uh, going the right direction. I think, and I think bottom line, right? Um, I think I think the biggest thing that I keep looking at on a lot of these folks on the on the defensive side of the ball is do they fit within Brandon Staley's defense, right? Yeah. And I, I mean, look, you, you, you brought Brandon Staley there to make that defense better. We were almost dead last in the league. Yeah. That doesn't look good, right? Nope. But, yeah. you know, was it was it a coaching issue? Was it a personnel issue? I'm tending to lean more towards a personnel issue mm-hmm. that, yep. um, you know, again, Gus Bradley, we all know it was the same play all the, every single defense. <laughs> yep. I mean, nothing yep. different, right? Cover three, that's yeah, it. That's it. And so, yep. again, you know, Brandon Staley definitely has um, – he, he needs to get his team to play his defense. Yeah. yeah. So, I really think some of these decisions – it'll be it'll be telling to see because I think Brandon Staley will make some real solid decisions on who we really will keep, who really are his guys and who are yeah. not his guys. 
Yeah, right. right. Um, and you know, he, he did what he could with what he had, but it was clear there was some, there were some gaps and some deficiencies for sure. Yeah. So, yep, exactly. I mean, this yep. is the off season to be able to make his team. And I yep. mean, for the most part, when a, a head coach comes into a team, they're inheriting basically the past coaches players and yeah. sure. he needs to make decisions on it. Is this guy going to fit my system or not? And this is, there's kind of oddly in a weird way, this is kind of an odd reset to, to the depth factor and what players that he really wants on the team. Right. So, yeah. I mean, this is, this is a kind of a key, key time to be able to make sure that you go into 2022 mm -hmm. with the Staley's guys. Right. And I yeah. mean, I, I think it's going to be an interesting off season and I, I'm excited for it, man. Like yeah, me it, too. once it once it opens up in March for free agency and, yeah, and all great. that stuff, I mean, it's going to yeah. be, it's going to be fun, man. I yeah. mean, yeah, it's gonna be there's exciting. a lot of teams out there that have a lot of different, uh, you know, big salary caps too. So there's going to be a lot right. of teams trying to, to spend and throw out a lot of big contracts out there. So yeah, yeah, it's going to be an interesting off season for us to make sure we can keep our guys and then to see where potentially they could yeah. go. So I'm I excited think, about it. You know, my thoughts are, is this, is that uh, one thing that we're actually seeing a lot uh, right now around the whole league is the fact that, uh, these teams are spending every penny to make their teams get into the playoffs and to get into the Super Bowl. Yep. Uh, this past year, the Chargers still had fifteen million dollars in cap space, like yep. for yep. the year. So yep. we we were being cheap, and yeah. the way that this uh, this league is going now, you can't be cheap anymore. You know, yeah. you got you gotta like you know use every penny to win the championship, you know, yeah. like, I mean, I hate to say that, you know, like it's, the, it's kind of like, you know, going the route of base, baseball, like in the Yankees and just paying like millions of dollars to, to win championships and stuff like that. But Hey, you, you got to do that sometimes, you know, yeah. like you, you, you pay for what you get. And if, if you're trying to get win the championship on a discount, it's, it's going to be few and far between, you know? Yeah. You know, and, and it is an interesting thing. I mean, you always do want to be able to keep some money on the books to allow it to roll over. You don't want to overextend yourself because then you get into a pickle, like say the saints where they basically have the worst situation of salary cap right now. That's true too. Absolute catastrophe as a team right now. Um, on, <laughs> I don't even know how they're even making it happen. I mean, the, next <laughs> year they're in a negative $74 million there. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they are in crazy liabilities. Yeah. I mean, they had seven million left uh, from this season, but then they have seventy-four million in a negative. So it's <laughs> it's pretty harsh to be able to look at that. I mean, yeah. that's where I'm going back to the point of you could potentially go after a Michael Thomas, mm -hmm. um, or you right. could find a way because they're going to be dumping dudes off on that yeah. team. I mean, yeah, yeah, there's sure. a lot of shifting going on there. So sure, sure. Those are those are things that we could also talk about down the road and what what potentially could be trade bait and what what guys we could get um yeah. out there that could be cut um so yeah either way i i'm excited for what's going to happen ahead of us and i think this is going to be a fun off season for us to be able to look at and really build that championship based team now yeah. so yeah um so I'm, I'm looking forward to it so uh thanks yeah. for watching guys subscribe right. yeah share you know let us know what uh you guys would like to talk about if you want to leave any comments or anything too we'd love to be able to hear some from our fans out there and, and viewers so yeah exactly so. absolutely <laughs> oh bros let's go oh, bros. Oh, bros. Let's we go. out <laughs> <laughs>